Good morning, everybody. Okay, do you hear me now? Yes. Good. Yes, Mr. I hear you. Yes. Hello. John, can I help? Yes. 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 How are you? We're fine. How is your day? Good. Okay, you know the rules here. And your cameras and your critical cards. Close the speakers. Yes, you close the speakers. Yes. Everybody close. So, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Now we will start our lesson. Um, first, of first of all, all I'd, like I'd like to thank you for attending the session today, and I'd like to say good morning. Today, inshallah, we're going to speak about a writing session. As I sent you a message, I told you to prepare your writing books. Um, I want you to get ready to get some information about writing paragraph. A paragraph, I think we studied that before. You think, but this way is going to be different because the paragraph is the most important thing in your writing. That's why we're going to make a main focus and a huge focus on it. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Why the paragraph is so important? The paragraph is so important because, number one, it's the most important unit of any piece of writing any piece of writing if you're writing an essay writing an uh, email a summary whatever you're writing okay you're gonna need a paragraph so you have to know the skill how to write an effective paragraph okay good morning all of you and we need to focus on our track today i hope you can hear me if you can hear me just raise your hand Great. That means you can hear me. That's great. Thank you. Now lower your hands. I can see all of you. Lower your hands. Thank you. Thank you very much for interacting. Good morning, everybody. And for those who just came in, we're going to speak about the skill of writing and which part of 
writing skill, we're going to speak about the paragraph writing. And why we're going to speak about the paragraph writing? We said it because it's the most important thing to do in your writing. If you want to build any form of writing, you're going to have to know how to build an effective paragraph. Number one. A paragraph. What's a paragraph? A paragraph is a short part of text consisting of at least six sentences, for some of you, six sentences, okay? And beginning on a new line, So, because we know when we write the paragraph, you have to start with a new line. It usually deals with a single idea, idea, one idea. So I'm going to repeat this a lot while we are working, that one paragraph means one single idea. One paragraph, one single idea. To write a paragraph, you have to know, number one. So before, what, what do you have to know? Before we go there, I'm gonna give you an example. If I ask any one of you to build, to build like a house, to build a room, to build anything, you'll get the tools needed for building and just go ahead directly. No, you can't. You're gonna prepare yourself, uh, prepare the materials, plan for what you're gonna do, where you're gonna do it, how you're gonna do it, and so on. So before you start to write a paragraph or write many paragraphs in one text, like an essay or uh, an email or a letter and so on, you're gonna have to know how to build this paragraph. And how to build this paragraph, you need to know which type, which type of paragraph you're gonna use. For example, um, you have to know how many types of paragraphs. We have more than, more than 10 types of paragraphs. So I'm gonna give an example of four only for this session. And you're gonna have to know, after you choose the type of the paragraph you're gonna write for the reason that you need, you're gonna have to plan this paragraph before you write. And we know how to plan for our writing. It's mentioned in chapter one that we have the writing process. Number one, you have to go through pre-writing with all the different techniques we studied. After that, you need to go for drafting or writing your ideas. After that, you need to go for revision, after that proofreading, and after proofreading, you go for publishing or giving it to your teacher. Okay, that's the, the system, the systematic way to write a paragraph. But within this system, you have to plan how you're gonna write, which part you're gonna start with. And that takes us to the third point, what are the parts of the paragraph? Today we're going to deal with all these ideas with a lot of practice and I'm going to give you a lot of chances to discuss these ideas with me. The types of the paragraph. The first type is the narrative paragraph, the second descriptive, the third expository, and the fourth one for today is the persuasive. Again, narrative, descriptive, expository, and persuasive. Okay, before we start, guys, um, I'm gonna open the mics for one second to just ask you one question and I want your reaction. Do you hear an echo while we're working here? I need to hear you. No, no echo. Uh, Everything is okay. Everything is okay. For you. Yeah, that was it's okay. Okay. Perfect. So back again, we're going to speak about um, the first type of the paragraph, the narrative paragraph. From the name, the narrative paragraph means to tell a story. So, do I tell stories in a paragraph? Yes. Sometimes I ask you to write a paragraph about an experience that you, that you had before or something that happened to you. So, the narrative paragraph gives you the chance to tell a story about a situation that you had before. And in a simple way, it's a group of, um, of incidents or events, a chain of successive events or facts happen to you. And 
for most of you, they prefer, for, or you prefer, to put them in the chronological order. The chronological order means the order of time. That means what happened first comes first. You get in the morning, uh, get up, you wash your face, dress yourself, get the breakfast, go out, go to school, do your work, go back home, get lunch, uh, the same order of time. So that's the chronological order. And remember, this part consists of statements that do not require explanation. You don't have to explain any idea that you have, because after that, I'm going to tell you that any idea you mention in your paragraph, you have to support. You have to explain, you have to add more and more and more. But for this type, you just mention the events ready one by one. For the next type, it's the expository. And I'm gonna need you to tell me about this expository. From its name, it means to expose. To expose means to explain, to show something. But why? Here, to show some facts, to show some ideas, to show some information about something just for showing just for showing you're not asking the reader to do anything else you're not convincing him to do anything else so you just provide some information i ask you to get some information about bats for example um, you go and get this information and write them in an ex expository paragraph okay you include facts only so Shall I add some information? My opinion about bats, okay? Or just what I think about them, why I'm afraid of them, why most of the people dislike them? No. And for this expository paragraph, you have to add only facts, okay? Subjective information, not your opinion. Facts and ideas that are not yours, they are facts. You can get them from books, from researches, or wherever you're gonna get them, uh, wherever you're gonna get them from. The third type now is that you can see when you saw the descriptive approaches, you're going to understand that, yeah, that's the descriptive paragraph. The descriptive paragraph here, it's a text piece of paragraph, one paragraph that describes, if I ask you to describe a place that you went to or an event that happened or you've been in, anything that you need to describe, you just add more adjectives. You describe more and more and more and more. And remember, we spoke before about two approaches of description. The descriptive approach of physical description, and the other one is the abstract description. The physical description means uh, to describe something using your five senses, based on the data that you receive from your five senses, what you see, what you smell, what you touch, what you hear, what you taste, whatever, the five senses. The abstract description is going to be for what you feel, your emotions, you know, what's your opinion about this topic. So we have two types of description. Do I have to mention all the physical description first and after that all the abstract description? No. So if you're going to speak about your room, for example, you're going to speak about the color of the room, describe the physical color, the, the, which is white or pink for the girls. And after that, describe what you feel about it. What's your, what's your opinion about it? Okay, what's the opinion of other people about it? After that, you move to your, your desk, for example. Describe the physical appearance of this desk. And after that, describe your emotion or idea about it. So you have to take it one aspect by the other. And after that, you use two approaches on it. Okay, the last... Okay, do you hear me? Um, okay. I'm gonna check for some of you raise their hands. Okay, yeah, you can speak now. Yeah. Yeah, you can speak. Okay. 
Uh, we have uh, Adham, you can speak. Uh, Mr. Can you explain the expository paragraph again? Expository paragraph? Yes, Mr. Please. Okay, okay. Um, Hamad Al Awadi. Mr. Sam Adam. Okay. Uh, what about? Okay, if you if you need me to explain again the expository and it's the same idea, just lower your hand. What one? Marwan, you can speak now. Mister, I don't understand the narrative, brother. Okay. Okay, so I'm going to take them all from the beginning, and that's better. So I'm going to take them all from the beginning. You can lower your hand if you have anything about them again. Okay. <clears throat> For, uh, yes, the narrative paragraph. In a simple way, you write a paragraph to tell a story. A story about something that happened to you. And you start from the beginning till the end. What happened first, you mention first. Okay? And here you don't have to explain the incidents. You don't have to explain what happened. Just mention what happened. That's the narrative paragraph. For the second type, which is expository, you exp social engineering. Okay. Okay, we're back again. We're talking about the expository paragraph. For the expository paragraph, it comes from its name, to expose. If I ask you to get a piece of information about something, about any topic, just go to the internet or find a book that talks about this, like uh, social engineering, as I said, an example. When you find this information, you just come and write it to me in a paragraph, in an organized way. That's the expository. You just write the facts that you found, but you don't write your opinions. That's the expository. The next type is to describe. It's the descriptive paragraph. In the descriptive paragraph, you describe. And how you describe, you describe using the physical description or abstract description. Physical description means to describe what you see, what you hear, what you smell, what you touch, what you taste. For abstract description, you write about your opinion, your feeling about this thing.
the persuasive paragraph again from its name it's persuasive to persuade you to convince you to do something it's like the expository but here you ask the writer to do something for the expository for the expository you just put the ideas the facts and explain them to the reader but with persuasive you get the facts the ideas and put them to the reader and ask him or push him to believe in your ideas or support your ideas or buy a product for example you ask him to take a move to do something so this type of the paragraph to get the reader accept a particular point of view or understand your position or support you After getting to know the types of the paragraph, now we're going to speak about the parts of the paragraph. Now I ask you to write a paragraph about your room, for example. Describe your room, okay? So you're gonna decide which type of the paragraph you're gonna choose. Number one, you're going to choose, um, describe your room, so it's descriptive. Let's try it. So how to write your paragraph. Your paragraph must be like this. Yummy, yeah, that's a sandwich. Your paragraph must be like a sandwich. Yes, it must be like a sandwich. It's not strange. The, the, the top part, it's going to be your topic sentence. The second bar, uh, part, or in the middle, it's going to be your supporting details. That's the delicious part, the juicy part. And the third part, at the end, you close your sandwich. Uh, I'm sorry, you close your paragraph. And that means you put the last part of it. So that is your sandwich that is that is your paragraph topic sentence supporting details and closing sentence first you decide the type of the paragraph you're going to use second you follow the, the let's say the layout of the paragraph topic sentence supporting details and closing sentence let's take them one by one the topic sentence what's a topic sentence the topic sentence is the first sentence in your paragraph and it's the most important why because it has the main idea of the paragraph if you write if you're having if you're having um the topic of description for your room so you're going to write the main idea uh, about my room my room is uh, the the best place in my life for example i have the best room ever that any, anyone can dream of so you write a topic sentence one simple sentence to tell your idea, to describe the main topic that you're gonna speak about. And it, you have to summarize this main complete idea in one sentence, and we call it the main idea or the topic sentence. After that, the supporting details. Supporting details are the juicy part of your paragraph, the most important part here not because it's just the most important but also because it's the biggest part of your paragraph number one um, why uh, what are the supporting details they are a group of sentences they are a group of sentences written after the topic sentence to give you more details and they make the body of your paragraph okay um, how to do them you have to give more ideas about this for example if you're going to speak about your room you're going to speak about uh, the color of the walls your bed is cozy and comfortable you, the doors the windows uh, the smell you're gonna tell me more supporting details okay okay how I write them you have to give me some facts some details some ideas some examples some description okay you have to give me more ideas to support that your room in the topic sentence is the best room. So here in the topic sentence, you said your room is the best room. And the supporting details, you tell me why. Give me details why it's the best room. Okay. The layout of your paragraph must be like this. How long is it? It must be from five to six sentences in total, all of it, including one topic sentence in the beginning, one closing sentence at the end, and that gives you three or four sentences in the juicy part, in the details part, in the supporting part. So in total, they are from five to six. One topic, one closing, and everything 
between them is supporting. Okay, let's take this example. You can see here, that's a paragraph about, um, about Canada. Okay, it has six sentences, and the first one is written in red. There are three reasons why Canada is one of the best countries in the world. Okay, I'm gonna open the mics for some of you to read. Are you ready? I'm going to choose the sentence. You can read. There are three reasons why Canada is one of the best countries in the world. First, Canada has an, ex an excellent health care system. All, Can all, Canada all Canadians have access to medical services at a responsible price. Second, Canada has a high, st a high standard of education. Students are taught by well-trained teacher and <clears throat> and are in encouraged to continue studying at university. Finally, Canada city are clean and effectively man managed. Canada can Canadian cities have many parks and lots of uh, and lots of space for people to live. Uh, as uh, a result, Canada is a, dis a, desirable, a desirable place to live. Thank you very much for that. Thank you, Hassan. That's, that's good. Now, after reading this whole paragraph, we note that we have um, six sentences, is right? One of them is a topic sentence. One of them is... A closing sentence and one of the uh, one of them not actually one of them like four of them are the supporting details is it right okay do you know where is the topic sentence that's the topic sentence the first one the first one in red there are three reasons why Canada is one of the best countries in the world that's your topic sentence. The most important idea, the main idea, and that means everything after that in the paragraph, every supporting detail is going to tell you why Canada is the most, uh, one, of the best, uh, one of the best countries in the world. And how many supporting details you have, you can see them clearly starting with first, second, finally. First, second, finally. So the first one, the first supporting idea that Canada has an excellent healthcare system is at the end I'm just going to say this it has excellent healthcare system no I'm going to explain why and how or give you more detail about this healthcare system that all Canadians have access to medical services at a, a reasonable price that's the first idea about Canada and the excellent healthcare system and the support of this idea first supporting idea done the second supporting idea here starts with second, because it's the second one, and that's a connective to make your paragraph um, connected together. You keep the unity of your paragraph. The second idea, that Canada has a high standard of education. Is it the end? That's the end of the supporting? No, I have to give you more about this. Students are taught by well-trained teachers and are encouraged to continue studying at university two ideas up to now. The third idea, it's the last one, so finally, Canada's cities are clean and efficiently managed. Canadian cities have many parks and lots of space for people to live. So I said that uh, Canada's cities are clean and efficient and I told you why they are efficiently managed and, and how it looks like, okay? So I give you three supporting details and the end is the closing sentence the end so one in the beginning for the topic sentence one at the end for the closing sentence and three in the middle for the supporting details 
I hope you understand this example. I'm going to open the mic for any, uh, for any one of you. Now, all of you, lower your hands. Lower your hands. Huh. Good. Now, if you have any question, just raise your hand. So, this one who wants to bring Eid, okay, I think that's Yahya. Mister, can you explain the persuasive text paragraph again? Okay, I'll try, okay. And if, if there is no time, because I have time limit, if there is no time, you can watch the video, record it back again. We're going to send it to the group and the website, on the website, for you to re-see it again. We watch it as you like, okay? If, if I didn't explain it. Okay, the next hand is going to be for uh, Sarah. Yes. Do you have a question? Yes. Um, the abstract, I didn't, I didn't understand the abstract description. Good. So the abstract description. For the abstract description, Sarah, you need to tell me your feeling about this thing. If I give you this uh, laptop, okay, and I tell you, wow, this is a gift for you, Sarah, because you are an outstanding student in our class. So you're gonna describe it for me, that it's a new, it's a great, it has a touch of screen and so on. That's the physical description. For the abstract description, you're gonna tell me that you're, you are so happy to get such a prize. Uh, you think it's uh, the best uh, gift that you had. So you tell me your idea or your feeling about this gift, about this laptop. You understand it now? I'm sorry, I'm gonna meet you again. Yes, yes. Sorry, understand now the abstract? Yes. It means to add your idea or feeling about the thing you're describing. Thank you. Uh, Atif? Yes, Mr. Uh, how to close the paragraph? Yes, Yes, how to close the paragraph. That's a perfect question. Thank you very much for that. Listen to the answer. To close the paragraph, the end of the paragraph needs to be so exciting. So what to do? Shall I add a new idea? Closing paragraph? No. Read the first, uh, read the first sentence with me. There are three reasons why Canada is one of the best countries in the world. Okay, you understand the idea? Now go to the last sentence, which is the closing sentence. As a result, Canada is a desirable place to live. In the first one, I'm saying that it's one of the best countries. In the last sentence, I'm saying it's a wonderful place to live in. Actually, it's the same meaning, but in different words. So in the closing sentence, you just re-say or rewrite what you want to say in the first, or what you already said in the first sentence, but in different words, in new words. You got it? I hope you got it. Now we move to the next slide. Let's practice that together, uh, together as this will be your homework. Now we're going to say, um, let's write a paragraph about this apartment. Number one, you need to get your, uh, maybe I just want to tell you, maybe we finish uh, our period or our time limit after five or six minutes. So. If it ended suddenly, you have to find your homework on the website or just write a paragraph about this picture. Okay, for the voice section, you're gonna write this uh, on the website and you have some homework uh, in the book. I'm gonna send you the pages. For the girls, I'm gonna send you the pages in the book and you can write a paragraph to this and submit it to your teacher. So pages in the book plus this uh, paragraph. Let's continue, let's practice this together. Let's write a paragraph about this apartment. Number one, when I say let's write a paragraph, you decide which paragraph. Descriptive, narrative, uh, expository, or persuasive. I think all of us would agree that here we can write a descriptive paragraph. Brainstorm. So I'm gonna open the mics for you. If you wanna speak, just open the mic, say your idea, or raise your hand, and I'm going to 
accept your invitation. Ready? Okay, need, I need, uh, now I need brainstorming ideas about how to describe this. So, and what's the main idea that you're going to choose in this room and how to support it. Uh, Ahmed Munir, can you speak? The, the color of the wall. Can you say what was the question again? Again, tell me what's the main idea that you're going to write about here in this room. Uh, what are you going to write about? The, the main, that it's the best room in the house. Thank you. Now, um, this KM, I don't know who's KM. Okay, after you finish uh, the, the interactive call with me, just you can mute your, your mic. Now, KM, I don't know who's KM. Okay. Um, how beautiful is the room? How beautiful is the room? That's good. And now for Ziad. Ziad, you can speak now. Ziad, you want to speak? Okay, thank you. Abdurrahman. Abdurrahman Subhi. Um, new setup? Yes. Tell me, what could be the main idea that you express here? Um, about uh, putting new stuff in my room. Buying new stuff to your room. That's yeah. good. That's a new idea. And now we're going to take Hamad Hussain. Hamad Hussain, you can speak now. Okay, Muhammad Sharif. Uh, Mr. We can talk about the appearance of the room. The appearance? Only the appearance, Ahmed? No, sorry, Ahmed. We talk about if you the room. Like the so appearance. you can add some details. Yeah. How many details do you think you can add here? Five or four details. Good. Maybe three or four, that's maximum. Don't add more than that. So. Okay. Good. Now, uh, Yed. Mr. The view. The view. The view outside the apartment. Is it right? Yes, Mr. Okay, thank you. That's a good idea. Now, you got some ideas. Now, the next slide takes us to... Um, that's the main idea. The next slide, what are the three details you're going to tell more about? Okay. Can you hear me? Okay, I think you hear me. So back again. For this, you need to add the three details. If you're going to speak about the color, Tell me three details about the color. What was the old color? This color, who chose it and why? And uh, it makes you feel what? Okay. If you choose for it's cozy or comfortable, tell me three reasons or three things about this. Why it's comf comfortable? Why it's cozy? Because you have um, a sofa over there in front of the TV. You had a small table for your meals. You have a nice view and just the color makes you relaxed and just feel home and so on. Add three details about the top sentence that you choose. The next slide. 